if you see some dishes that need to be clean, just clean it. You know, don't Ricky. just you can you can't give all that on top of your wife. You can't. Hey, hey, uh, you know? how does it feel clean dishes now, bro? Be no, I have a, you know what I've always done it, so I. Don't, I, I mean, I've always done I'm not gonna lie. When I started seeing that it was the norm, I had to uh -huh. adjust. But you know what? Uh -huh. It's it's funny you mentioned uh -huh. clean the dishes. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Tiana. Thank you so much for tuning in. For those of you who have been here before, welcome back. For those of you who have not been here yet, this is a YouTube channel dedicated to anti-MLM content. Um, I have been gone for the last like week and a half. Um, I just moved house, so yeah, new place, new background. I'm not sure if like this is gonna stay the background or whatever, but um, I really wanted to make sure I got like something up. I just, it's been a long time and you know, I miss you guys. So anyways, all 176 of you guys, I'm so happy. Thank you so much. Um, I'm almost at my next milestone of 200 subscribers. So um, if you don't already subscribe, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. Today, I want to talk about men in Monate. So I think with the recent launch of Monate's men's line, we are going to see a lot more men um, starting to join this business. So it's already quite obvious and well known that multi-level marketing companies target uh, stay-at-home moms, women with children, etc. Um, and I think that this uh, target kind of goes hand in hand and these men are almost targeting the husbands of women who are stay-at-home moms. Um, I think that their spin on their idea of helping their wives succeed in this business, um, not only is it chauvinistic, um, and I, I feel like it's somewhat patronizing, but at the same time, um, it just again goes to show that this is about recruiting people the, this is not about the products. This is not about how amazing the products are. This is about um, recruiting and jumping on the opportunity to recruit others. And um, they say, you know, oh, we wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for how successful our wives were or whatever. But no, um, this is just an effort to, again, like cattle. Is that the word? Cattle? Oh, rain. What's that? When you rain in. Lasso? Saddle? horse dogs. I don't have a farm. Um, but yes, I think that this is just like a way to like to rein in um, more single women, more women with children, and then also to give those women um, something to deflect back on their husband. Um, so yeah, anyways, let's let's jump into these two men. These are two Monate husbands that are getting on a live for their wives. I can't tell if, I think that they are in the business too, um, but they are specifically getting on in defense of their wives and um, why they chose to join the business. I, I don't know if you want to start, you want to go ahead and tell your story, like what, what well, made you skeptical at first and then what changed your mind, you know, like, like, like you know, tell, you got to tell the, the wives and the husbands as well that are skeptical and don't believe in this stuff. So, you know, we got to talk about that. So I, I want to know. Yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, when I first when I first found out about this business, mm -hmm. I was um, um, the biggest um, critic, uh -huh. and I was very skeptical of this business in the beginning. Um, I was raised uh, with this mind frame coming from my family, especially my old man. My old man. Yeah, my family. Right now. I'll never forget what my dad told me. Hey, son. Uh, but it's back in the day. He, he'll he'll tell you this. Uh, there's no such thing uh, as you know working for an MLM company or like a you know mm -hmm. a pyramid. This is a pyramid. Those are pyramids. Yeah, pyramids. yeah, of course. That's what and a lot of people. Back when I was in young, real young. Um, uh -huh. Believe it. Or not. There's no such thing, or there is such a thing. Like plenty of people do it. I think that your dad might have just been saying like, it's not a smart idea. Like pyramid schemes, like. Um, we saw in that independent study by the FTC that no product pyramid schemes, um, you fare like a 10% chance of succeeding, whereas opposed to a product-based pyramid scheme, uh, you fare at like a 1% chance of succeeding, if not less. Um, so I think that your dad was maybe just like, you know, trying to help you out. But not, 
uh, now my dad is very open-minded about that. And, and believe it or not, he helped me out a lot with this situation because, again, I was fighting with at least almost every night for the past three months yeah. when she came to me about this. Okay. And finally, um, I went to, to go see my old man, and, and we sat on a round table with me, uh, my dad, my stepmom, and, and they were all they were all trying to tell me allow her to you know you know to get into this opportunity and i was like whatever go ahead you know do it i don't understand how her his dad was so opposed to mlms as well and then all of a sudden it took a sit down round table with your wife you and the two and your parents to convince you to get in on the business and not only that I am also confused. You guys had been fighting for the last three months. Imagine any other company, business, anything like that, bringing that much additional stress and conflict into your marriage. Three months that they were fighting. And then it was only until he got on board. Like, what if he wasn't ever on board? Like, it took him getting on board for them to, like, be cool. I don't know. I just think, like, Th over over doing something like this in an effort to quote unquote like prove somebody wrong or whatever that it's going to cause that much strain I just I'm not sure I see you know, like just how many other businesses cause that much emotional strain on your family on your relationship on your business I name them please that aren't multi-level marketing companies but I didn't I didn't say to do it like I believed in her um, you know, not that I didn't believe in her. My thing was, since I always felt like these things were scams or like, like it was BS, I didn't want her to get more upset. Of course. Um, and I was very protective of her on that. Like, because she went through so much yeah. that I didn't want another disappointment. No. Uh -huh. So, man, I would say three months, uh, three months into the business, um, what really changed my perspective uh, was when I went to, uh, when I went to Cancun. Right. And I was able to see, you know, Monet everywhere. Like the yeah, one yeah. walk in, you see Monet signs, the Monet girls, the Monet passports that were like hanging them on Gigi's neck. Uh -huh. The experience and how they treated you, the culture, the people, individuals like me and you just, we never met, but we spoke to each other like we knew each other for yeah. years. Like family. Like, like family. family. Like family. Uh -huh. Like, like yeah. this, is not, this is not something that, that's BS. And yeah. that's when my whole perspective started changing. And, okay. and then ever since that day. I Going to Cancun on one of their trips and seeing like the facade that they put on, like the show in an effort to recruit people and keep people in, like that's what. Oh. I just broke my chair. Sorry. Okay. Um, it wasn't really a chair. It was a desk table for body sex dollars from Home Depot. But anyways, okay, back to, oh yeah, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so the thing that made you, that, that sold you was Cancun. Weird. Also, what do you mean this is not something that's BS? Do you know who also has those, like, trips? Like, all of those companies. Like, it works. You don't think they have, like, a, a trip that gets people hyped up? Like, you don't think Arbonne doesn't have their frick, what do they call it, their white party or whatever? Like, they all have those trips. So, hey, like, had this guy gone on an Arbonne trip, would he have been seeing the same thing? Probably. Maybe. I assume so. If that's all it took for him to get on board. Okay. I'm the biggest supporter. Uh -huh. the biggest supporter. And, and I'm telling you, it was, it was rough the first three months. But after that, I, become a, I became a number one fan. As you know, um, I was on a live yesterday and... Uh -huh. Yeah, I was talking a little bit about my, what I do, but I was just pulling up, you know, so telling her about a little bit about her story. So I'm all about Of course. So, so I wanted to tell a little bit about my story because I want them to know because it's not, it's not, mine is not mostly like, oh, I, I was skeptical at first. I hated it. You know, uh, a little bit of background on me, like from before, I've always had that business mindset, you know. Um, I'm that type of person that, that you know, my wife was in ne and never agreed to it. Um, but I'm the type of person you come with me with a business uh, opportunity and I don't care what it is. If it's something to make money, I'm like, let's do it. I'm down right. for whatever. My wife from before, she did a MLM for like five years. You know, it doesn't, you know, it, that's, that's not the point. But she did it for five years. I've all, I was supported with her. It didn't work out. I've been a nurse for seven years. 
And I've been working like a dog for seven years, you know, 70, 80 hours a week. I want to thank him for being a nurse. Hey, like that's amazing. Um, but also your wife did another MLM for five years. I think that that's indicative enough of the fact that it's not about how hard you work. Cause I assume that this woman likely worked hard over those five years. Um, I think the thing that's happening with Monet right now that's different is this like social media uh, marketing movement that's happening that's allowing people I think to deceptively recruit other girls like it's almost like it's almost like does anybody remember that sunny bathing suit sunny co bathing suit thing where it was like all you had to do was repost a picture of that red bathing suit and everybody got a free bathing suit I don't know if anybody remembers that um, but I feel like it's just like we see that trends and these things kind of sweep the internet really fastly and I think that like no oh, shampoo dealer is like um, an aesthetic now I don't really know um, but I think that that's why some of these women are having a little bit more success like over the last five years like the way that becoming an influencer and like having social media and building this following has kind of really become uh, such um, I don't know like such a marketing technique for companies um, that this is really what's pushing some of these distributors to be successful they so you don't have to have a lot of followers you don't have to have a lot of this but I think that a lot of them are um, are so successful at recruiting other girls because of the lifestyle that they portray on their social media, not necessarily, um, you know, that working for the company is amazing, but, you know, this lifestyle is a lifestyle I have. Do you want this lifestyle too? You should also work for the company. You know, I, I appreciate it. I, you know, I'm, I'm, um, you got to be grateful for whatever you have. I'm grateful for my family, for my house that I have. Everything I have now is because of my career, um, but it's not, it's a hole. It's like a black hole that, that's missing, you know, like, you know, yeah, I have all this and then I have a great career and the American dream for say, uh, you know, um, nine to five and, and, but you know, where's the time with the family, you know? You know, I pretty much missed, you know, the seven years of my older son's life, you know? So this came along for my wife one thing that I have noticed, and especially, um, so I watched some other videos from this man who's speaking, like, and his wife and their families and whatnot, and one thing they really push is that if you work a corporate job, if you work nine to five, that you are missing out on all of this time with your children, with your family, that you're not around, um, essentially insinuating that you're like an absentee parent when you work a corporate job or you work nine to five. There are plenty of people that work full-time jobs and are still present for their children who can still make it to baseball games, dance recitals, uh, parent-teacher meetings, all of that good stuff. Just because you work a nine-to-five job doesn't like make you a bad parent, doesn't make you absentee. It means you're providing for your family. But you know, not everybody wants to be home all day with everybody in their family. Some people enjoy their career. They enjoy what they do. Like it, it's not it's not a negative to work a, a corporate job. And she was brave enough because some people are not brave enough to switch to be like, babe, I, something else is coming along. This, this, this thing Monet is coming. And I'm like, I know them. And I'm like, instead I was like, fuck man, like, like, I don't know when this is going to end. And, 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 and I'm guilty and telling uh, that I told her a bunch of times, you know what, even though I supported her and I've always been supportive, babe, you got to do something. I can't keep working 70, 80 hours a week. You know, okay. you got to go back to school. You could do <laughs> it. I was, hold on. yeah, I was very supportive with her. Like, you could do it. You're smart. Just go to school. We'll have both careers and we'll live a good life and I won't have to work so much. You know, that mindset that life gives you, you know, um, that, that experiences, you know, throw, throw at you because I had a business before which I lost everything and it threw me into school and I had to do something, right? So um, I was like, I gave her an ultimatum, you know, and, and, and I thank God that my, that my wife was so adamant, you know. This is a two-way street. I can't be working only and you, and you staying at home and, and thinking that you're doing a business and it's not working out, right? Right. So, right. so. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just kind of weird to me. He's giving her ult ultimatums. She was very adamant about it. I was like, I gave her an ultimatum. I'm like, let's do it. I'm giving you six months. 
And let me tell you, that's like, that's like the best decision that she made and that I made of giving her that ultimatum. Like, look, okay, let's do it one more time. Let's try again, because. That I made of giving her that ultimatum. And also, are these women CEOs or what? Their, their husbands are signing off on them to join Monet if they wanted to? It's kind of weird. If you really want your husband to change his mind, they need to see results. Yeah, show, show them you're dedicated. That's uh, it. They don't want to. They yeah. don't want to see. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, they don't want to. They don't want to see a, a a person that says I'm going to do this, and then in a week from now they're like, oh, whatever. Let's see what happens. I don't know if it's going to happen. They want to see commitment, and that's what I saw in in my wife. I saw her to two or three o'clock in the morning talking to women, talking to people. It doesn't matter who it was. She was like, oh, this is what I'm gonna do. And that commitment. I mean, do you not think that's weird either? Why would you be messaging women at two or three in the morning to sell them shampoo? Nobody else thinks that's like bizarre. If you're work, like, when are they not not working? When are they not not working? If you're working 24 seven, if your social media is your work, da, 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 like you join it to like be able to have like time freedom. Why are you working at two in the morning, three in the morning messaging girls? That shouldn't be in the job description. If I got a message from you at two in the morning about joining my company, I'd be pissed. Rather if your wife is working a nine to five or she's working in Monet, you have to support her and believe in her. Definitely. If you, the, no if what. everything was turned, if uh -huh. everything was turned and you told your wife, honey, I'm going to invest in this. Honey, this is going to work out. She needs to believe in you. Yeah. That's what relationships are all about. No, wrong. That is not what relationships are all about. I disagree with you, sir. Um, relationships are about communication, compromise, doing not just what's best for you, but what's best for the both of you. Um, doing things to advance each other and advance your family and your career. Like, I understand, like, if that's what you genuinely believe is going to advance all of those things, then you should support each other. Um, but saying that if your husband or your wife doesn't support your MLM, um, that they are somehow in the wrong. I think that they've probably just, you know, uh, done their research. Husbands, man, give your girls, give your girls an out of girl. That's give right. them an out of girl. Don't be me yeah. the first few months that I, I would come and see her working late at night and I would put a little stank face on. Yeah, man, and that's... like by a stank face when he said, "Give your girl an atta girl." Like, please, like, how patronizing is this? Is this not patronizing to you guys? Because this is really patronizing to me. And if my husband spoke about me, spoke to me like this, like, I don't know, we probably wouldn't be married. I'll tell you that right now. Again, be there for your girl, man. Uh -huh. I'll support her one hundred ten percent. Get involved. You know, yeah. like, if, if you know, do a live, you know, shoot a video, uh, help her, you know, uh -huh. because I promise you that'll motivate her. You know, as you know, uh, Mike, it motivates our, our women to strive for greatness. Oh, and definitely. All, all these women that are out there wanting to do this business, trust me, with that support, they're, uh -huh. they're gonna just, they're going to flourish. They're going to flourish. Definitely. And it's like you said, it's like you said to you girls, if you're in this moment and you're working and you're doing Monet, okay? Mm -hmm. And your husband's a little skeptical. Don't worry about uh -huh. it. Uh -huh. It's okay. This is all part of the process. Yeah. <laughs> if your husband's skeptical, don't worry about it. This is all part of the process. No. I was, I was, I was my wife's biggest, biggest uh, uh -huh. critic, man. I was even uh -huh. googling stuff on 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 Google and and yeah. air falling off and all this bullshit. But you know yeah. what she did to me? Uh -huh. She had an answer for everything I gave her. As if they don't teach them that. She had an answer. Hair falling off and everything. She had an answer for everything he gave her. I mean, is he sure that her answers were correct? Because I've seen a lot of, you know, like, Monate's clinically proven studies. Okay. What about all the lawsuits and, you know. And, uh, yeah. that, 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 you know, I couldn't, I couldn't argue with that. Why can't we sacrifice and be till two or three o'clock in the morning trying to grind with your wife in a business that 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 you know it really works, you know? Really? And the ones that don't think it works, then educate yourself. 
there's a bunch of YouTube um, videos there, on multi-level marketing. There's yeah. Live, but all day. yeah. Educate yourself. If people want their lives to change, but don't block yourself. I, I know. I know. I don't know the the person that likes waking up in the morning and going to a, a job and having a boss. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. There's not one person that you ask and they're like, oh my God, I love having a boss. That's, if they're telling you that, that's bullshit. Again, like that there is inherently something wrong with working a job in which somebody who like has qualified like experience and credentials like works above you and is able to provide you guidance like a boss isn't like some terrible bad word like I get the idea that people want to work for themselves and that people want to have time and financial freedom like I fully 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 understand that but to reframe working in an office, having a like a job where you work nine to five and having a boss as if like people haven't done that for ages, as if it's not the norm um, to do so, like that it's inherently like wrong to have those things or that like, you know, like they're when people like when when there is this structure that they also says is like a pyramid structure you know like corporate businesses are also pyramids because like the ceo blah, blah, blah. um you know when i think of the corporate structure that i used to work in the people at the top were the most qualified had the most experience years of experience a lot of qualifications the people at the top didn't join Monate two months ago and recruit as many friends as possible, and then that's what got them there. You know, like it's it's time, um, dedication to a company, to a skill, to a craft, um, showing that you know how to be a leader and maintain a team, work um, among a team. Like just because you can recruit a, a lot of people doesn't mean that you are good at running a business. Doesn't mean that you're responsible enough to run a business doesn't mean you have the qualifications to be a manager or a boss or whatever and I've also seen um, it's it's kind of like it's like which one is it you know like do you work for yourself or do you work for your upline because there's a lot of requirements to be getting on zooms and I've seen some things even saying you know oh come work with me come work for me I'm not a I'm not a regular boss I'm a cool boss but I thought uh, but, uh, but uh, I thought you weren't my boss I thought I work for myself you know, it's like, which one is it? Is it, you know, you know, it's like you can't have it both ways. And it really, at the end of the day, it's that like you're not a boss. You're an independent contractor for a company that sells shampoo. I mean, I really think we need to just call it what it is. And who likes to be with their family more 24 hours a day? I do. I would love to be. I don't want to miss nothing about my kids. Nothing. I want to be able to take them to baseball practice. I want to be able to see, I don't know, wake up in the morning and make them breakfast. The same thing with my wife. Be able to be there for her help her out around the house, you know, you know, and so, you know, that's another thing. You have to help your wife around the house. You, you, just because you go to a job and get home, you think that she's, you know, you, you, you think that she's eating shit at home. She's not, she's trying to, she's trying to work. I mean, this is the type of job. Oh, she's trying to push if, you, if you see some dishes that need to be clean, just clean it. You know, don't Ricky. just, you can't, you can't give all that on top of your wife. You can't. Hey, hey, uh, you know? how does it feel clean dishes now, bro? Be honest. No, I, I, but you know what I've always done it, so I, I mean, I've always I'm not gonna lie, when I started seeing that it was the norm, I had to uh -huh. adjust, but you know what? Uh -huh. It's it's funny you mentioned uh -huh. clean the dishes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Our, our girls have created uh -huh. this, this uh -huh. discipline, this will uh -huh. to want to be successful and uh -huh. successful in these behaviors, right? Uh -huh. And, yeah. and, 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 and like you said, I'm so sorry, but what, when you see some dishes in the sink, help your girl out, a girl out, like this, this mentality that, that these guys have about their wives and like their capabilities and like what their roles are within their family. Like, it's really like, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's super misogynistic. Um, yeah, it's. You know, I mean, I think it's just really pushing, you know, like societal gender norms to the max, like the way that these men um, view their wives, like that, that, that that's their role and that like, ooh, this is an opportunity for them to like step up and show their worth and their ability to run a business. And like, it's like, ooh, she put her big girl panties on for this. Like, I don't know. It's, it's crazy how 
you girls do these lives and all these stories like now. So next to you? How tough it is. So next to you? Yeah, she's right here. Oh, hey, what's up? Thank you. She's, she's ah. in it. She's in ah, okay, sorry, sorry. Sorry. She's not watching. She's in the yeah. hustle. She's working right now. Look at that. Working from her phone. <laughs> Wouldn't it be so nice if you were just like laying in bed like not working? And you like it was nighttime and your husband wasn't doing like a forced live and then like you weren't like messaging random people all day from your phone on Instagram? I don't let my wife be next to me. I'm like, get out, get out. <laughs> not yet. I'm not ready for By the way, like, it's crazy. like I got my wife and I got this, the sister. Like, yeah. Crazy. I got an audience over here, bro. Really? No yeah. shit. I got my wife. Look, now, now my, now my, now my, Getting all excited and getting over here. Yeah. <laughs> we're um, proud. We're proud. We're like, we're like, wait, these men are gonna take our business. Like, what's going on? You know, <laughs> you doing know, amazing. It's, it's speaking about, you know, again, guys, this was all about. It's another thing. What do you mean these men are gonna take your business? I thought the point was that you just want to recruit everybody as many people as you can. These men aren't gonna take your business. These men are growing businesses too. Right? You don't get. How many other companies do you know that where you have to go out and recruit your own competitor? Trying to flex. We're not trying to show you guys that we're. No. Flexing. No. No. I don't know. You, Let me get the little one. I'm trying to show yeah. you that it's possible. For that is possible. That's, That's it. It's right here. It's right. In it's like why would we want to do that? Like what you're showing right now is a live of you guys. Like, what are you showing? What do we want to do? What is the same thing as you? I don't want to do that. Until yesterday, I was nervous of, of doing this. You know, of, of like, like actually like talking. Why are you here then, right? Is it to recruit? Is it to recruit people? If it asks, I want, if you, let me know if you think it's to recruit people. I would love for you, please take a minute down below, type yes or no. Do you think that they are here on this live in an effort to recruit people? Or you just think that they're just there just because they're like, they love it. We can be doing Netflix and chill. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay. That's true. But we're here today. We're doing this. Doing this. We're why? doing this. Ask yourself, whoever's watching, ask yourself why we're doing this. Because you're trying to recruit people. We're, we're not here for shits and giggles. I'm not going to, you know, and like, I'm not, I don't want to, I'm not wasting my time. We're, we're, you know, we have a family. That's you it. Know? Yeah, so, so we're doing this is because it's for real, and 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 there's there's money to be made, and there's money to be made in a positive way, when you're not hurting nobody, you're not stealing from nobody, and look what's going on right now in in, in the in the world, the economy is is going to shit. The reason that a lot of people have such issue with multi-level marketing companies is because of the destruction that it leaves, because of the amount of debt that it puts people in, because of the amount of people that do not succeed within this business. So I think to say we're not hurting anybody, we're not, you know, we're not causing any trouble, like this is like a, a solid way to make money. Um, no, I disagree. I think like the foundation of you making money is hinged on recruiting other people and this continuous cycle of recruits, which is just physically impossible to maintain. Um, I want to say it was like, if you're required to recruit three people by the 16th cycle, you've already capped out on the population of the globe. So, you know, I mean, you think even like fundamentally, like uh, the way that these Monet girls like are even set up to start like in building their Mo neighborhood, they're required to get a certain number of um, VIPs and a certain number of market partners in order to to get to that um, next promotion. I think it's like three market partners and like four VIPs. I, I don't quote me, could be wrong, um, but I think it's something along those lines. And so if every single person is required to recruit three market partners and those three market partners are required to recruit three market partners, again, by the 16th cycle, you've already capped out on the globe. So there is not a reality of each person being able to recruit and build this team um, like like it's like it's claimed to be like it's like it's so easy to be successful and build a team but like in order for your team to build a team to build a team um you know the numbers just don't pan out so yeah i don't know so they say they're numbers people's they're numbers people but they obviously like haven't really maybe looked at the numbers going to shit right. and we're still we're still moving up
We're still why? Moving. Why? Because because of mindset. Mindset. You know, because we could easily be like, no, the economy, no, we're not gonna you know, sell nothing. And I think that this is another misconception. What do you mean, why? Because of mindset. If the economy is crashing, right? Yet people are still joining a business opportunity to make money. This is like goes right hand in hand with the last video that I made. Whereas business is skyrocketing for multi-level marketing companies while the economy is declining and the market is declining, which leads us to believe that there are more people looking for business opportunities and buying into this opportunity in an effort to make money rather than the fact that there are actually this much this many people spending and buy, and pouring their money into the company because the product is so great um, it's the other way around so um, right off the bat for him to say that you know the economy is going to shit yet they're doing so amazing to equate it to mindset I think that this guy is not stupid and he knows that it's not mindset that is really taking them to the next level the economy, no, we're not gonna you know, sell nothing and, and, and we're not gonna make no money. No, we'll leave that for next year to want to the economy. And I think that he also knows it's, that they're not really selling anything. It's not, what do you mean we're not gonna sell nothing? It's not about selling things, it's about recruiting other girls into the opportunity. They're, that's why they're on this live. That's why they're on this live right now, it's to recruit people into the opportunity. That's why they're saying that they've seen these numbers, that it's possible to make money, that it's all of this stuff, is because they want you to join too. They would get no benefit from saying all of these things if it wasn't to get you to join the business. Funny you mentioned that. It's funny you mentioned that um, when when all this happened with the pandemic, uh, the attitude from was not, you know what pandemic. That's right. We're not we're not saying that it wasn't serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're sensitive of everything that's going on, but of course. that didn't stop her from doing what she needed to do day in and day out. And I think it's kind of obvious, like there's like MLMs are growing a lot during the pandemic and it's not because of how amazing the product is. And it's not about how amazing of a saleswoman your wife is. I mean. You know how many people out there are, are and, I, and I said this call yesterday in Spanish, they're screaming for help quietly. You don't notice, but they're screaming for you to come up to them and be like, how, how, how would you like to make an extra $500 a month? How would you like to make an extra $1,000 a month? You know, some of them will be like, no, 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 I've heard of all that bullshit. I've gotten that already a million times, but who cares? And those people will probably say yes later on in life because they're saying that now because they don't, they're not educated. But how many people out there are dying for somebody to come up to them and guide them to make extra money? Agreed, man. They're dying. To... We're silently screaming for them to come and help us. And also to sit there and say that you can make an extra $500,000 a month. Like, I think like a lot of people would, would like to make some extra money. It's no secret. Like, I think you can go up to anybody. But the point of the matter is that like, it's through your shady MLM business in which you need to, uh, a lot of times, like drop your morals and like message all your friends, family, uh, anybody like with a heartbeat, literally, um, to, to join this amazing opportunity in which you can make money. Like it doesn't even matter. Like you could replace any, if, if you didn't know that this was Monet, we could replace this conversation to be about protein powder and it could be for Arbonne. We could replace this to be about keto coffee and it could be for It Works. It's like, this isn't about um, like how good this opportunity is because this product is so good. You got to get on it. It's that like, the business is booming because a lot of people are being recruited. I don't know. I don't know. I don't really know. I mean, like, I think it's just kind of obvious that, like, the, the focal point isn't the product, right? You know, before the car's over, man, like, I'm going to repeat it. I, I'm, I'm glad that we did this together. Like, um, we have a great connection, bro. Not only to us both, but our wives. We should do one with our wives together. You know, we should do we should do it at the at the house. Look, uh -huh. the house together. together. All right, let's do it. So I, I, open, I feel open panel. Yeah, open panel. I, I feel grateful as hell to do this call today with you, bro. And I hope that we could do it over and over again and next to each other in the house having drinks, bro. All right, so sure. so okay. Um, so please let me know what do you guys think about these men getting on lives for their wife. Um, I'm not really quite sure I 
appreciate the way that they view their wives and that they view their wives' role within their family. Um, to me, I just think it's really misogynistic in a sense the way that they, um, I don't know, like they treat their, their wives like their children um, and, and pride them in, in, in starting a business and doing something that's new. Um, I think that the way that he said he gave his wife an ultimatum at the beginning, um, how, you know, I don't know, um, I think that he really painted a negative around working a 9-to-5 job as if working a 9-to-5 job means that you can't be with your family, that you, like, you can't be there for a baseball game or, um, a recital or whatever it may be, and I think that we all know that that's just a crock of sh um, there are plenty of parents who work full-time jobs who are also able to be present for their children. Um, it's, I don't think it's, it's, it's one or the other. Um, I think that you can just be a parent and not be there for your children and work a nine to five job, or you could be a stay at home mom and you could still be a parent and still not really be present for your children. Um, I don't think that, um, you know, one is really based on the other. So thank you guys so much for tuning in to my YouTube, my YouTube. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to my YouTube channel. Please let me know what you think. Do you feel like now that Monet has dropped their, um, their black line for males uh, that we will st see like an increase in um, male distributors kind of showing up in their marketing and like on our news feeds or in our advertisements, going on lives, all of that good stuff. Um, and do you think that the way that these husbands talked about their wives was um, a bit misogynistic? Do you think that it really painted them in a dim light, like that their worth was hinged on their ability to work and, um, and I guess to, to build a living outside of building a home? Not only that, that building a home was solely their responsibility and um, this idea that women making money for the family is, is almost like unheard of to them. Um, and I think, and I, you know, I don't want, I don't want to like over speculate or anything like that, but, um, they had mentioned something about a couple of families only being in the United States for a short, a short amount of time. Um, and I do believe that, um, within the Hispanic culture, there still is this ideal of patriarchy or like where like the male is always like typically the head of the house and the breadwinner. And so I think that um, this is somewhat like shattering those bounds. And um, it, I mean, it was obvious that she was going to have to get a job like his wife anyways, and it might have been that money was tight. He said he couldn't maintain the workload that he was doing to maintain their family. So she had to go back to school. She had to get a job. Um, and this is what she wanted to do. I guess this is what she was passionate about. Um, but, um, we are entering the society where it's not unheard of for both parents in the home to work. You need like to have like a two income household. Um, it's, it's becoming harder and harder to actually maintain a one income household uh, as we are moving into, I don't know, whatever time period we are into moving into now. Um, and so, I don't know, I think that this idea of women not being able to like, I don't know. I don't really know where I'm going with all of this, but I just think like, I didn't really like the way that he talked about his wife and like her starting a business. And if my husband spoke about me starting a business like that, I would be like, bro, don't talk about me like I'm effing too, you know? It, it would be like, I don't know, it would just be like, don't, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know. Like that's just, it, to me, it's just like, okay. How does it feel doing dishes now, bro? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, obviously, it appeals to some people. They're, they're not trying to appeal to me. I'm not their general demographic. I think that they are very much targeting people who are looking for a community, looking for friends, looking for family. Um, and in order to get that, you got to buy into Monique. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, hit the bell. Um, I hope to be providing you guys with some more content soon. Um, this is my new home. My background may or may not change. I don't really know. Um, yeah, thank you.